Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. A dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. Now we're going to place uh, 14 lumineers on Dr. Feinberg today. And uh, have I given you any anesthetic? No. Did you get any anesthetic for any of the procedures we did? No. And uh, everybody has had an opportunity to see what his teeth look like before. Now I want you to think about this. Our patient today is a dentist. He's even prepped his own lower teeth, right? Yes. Did you prep some of your uppers too? A little bit. Okay. We have to define prepping. Prepping does not mean a predefined removal of tooth structure. So we like to talk about luminaire prepping as being cosmetic contouring. So that if we didn't do anything, life would go on uneventfully for you, right? Okay, now let's get started here. Uh, we've got a knowledgeable patient uh, and we're prepared. What's going to happen is if everything goes right, and it almost always goes right, we're going to bond a porcelain veneer to one of his porcelain crowns. We're going to put on 13 uh, porcelain veneers, lumineers, on his natural teeth, and we're going to adjust the occlusion. Now, that's quite a bit to do in one visit, so it's probably going to take us about close to two hours to get it all done, uh, and then we'll have him in tomorrow and do some finishing. The big difference in bonding to porcelain from enamel is that you want to wait about 24 hours to get the final bond established. That's very important. That's when we do the final finishing. Otherwise, when I finish too soon, it takes 24 hours for a silenated bond to fully mature. So what, uh, what I do is I don't open those contacts, but we'll talk more about that later. I have a knowledgeable assistant, Lisa. She's been with me since she was 17, and she's only 27 now. It's really a good backup. She's my navigator, so to speak. But uh, she's got everything set up here. Let's let the audience see how we have everything set up. She has pre-treated the porcelain with Serenade Prime and with porcelain conditioner. The porcelain conditioner goes on first, and then the Serenade Prime goes on. So those are chemically ready to go. Now I want you to think about the five surfaces you can bond to. Enamel, porcelain, dentin, old composite, and metal. Now once you've done proper surface treatment, that lumineer doesn't know what that surface is. Think about that. Curing through porcelain, you're having a great deal of diminution of your light energy, whether you're using a halogen light or whether you're using these little LED lights. Everybody's got a quick story to tell, but here's the reality. When you start curing through porcelain, you need the power of the plasma arc light, the sapphire. Another very important uh, critical factor is having a good model. Uh, what we recommend is the uh, lumineers impression material because it's very low in viscosity in that yellow batch and you can drive it up there and it gives you razor sharp margins without having to do any gingival retraction. Just before we started, Lisa polished his teeth with porcelain polishing paste. And that's a non-aqueous fine particle. You get that non-aqueous pleasant tasting paste that we use on porcelain, but I like to use it because it contains an enzyme in there to remove the plaque on the teeth. So we have already cleaned the teeth, they've been prepared, the uh, lumineers themselves have been treated, and we're gonna get started with surface preparation on the teeth. But before I do that, I'm going to place some paint on dental dam. So we're gonna do surface preparation on the maxillary right, first by cuspid. Okay, now we'll wash your mouth out. 
Now we're going to put on paint on dental dam on the lingual side. You won't be able to see much while I'm doing this, but I'll give you a, a peek at it afterwards. All right. And you want to be careful you don't get it going through the interproximal embrasures or when you put the lumineers on, sometimes it doesn't seat very well. Now what we're going to do is cure that for three seconds. Close your eyes. But the best way to protect your eyes is to close them. And then I want to check and see if I have partially polymerized the paint on dental dam to the rubbery state. Because every place I have the blue paint on dental dam, the ultra bond won't bond to it. This is a real handy trick. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. Okay, now we'll take the uh, mirror and I'll show you what this looks like on the lingual side. Just takes a minute and it saves a lot of finishing time. Now we're going to start surface preparation. We're going to put porcelain on the porcelain. Porcelain is buffered hydrofluoric acid. It's the safest hydrofluoric acid you can put in the mouth and we don't want it to run all over and it chemically etches the porcelain. Now you want to be sure that you get all the hydrofluoric acid removed because the only thing that neutralizes hydrofluoric acid is calcium. And once it gets going into the tissue, it keeps going until it reaches bone. And on the way, it passes periosteum. Okay. Yes, this is porcelain conditioner, right? Okay. And that is an organic acid. That's very important that you remember that. Because if you try to use an inorganic acid, such as hydrofluoric acid on porcelain, it won't activate the silane. And now we're putting etch and seal on the natural teeth. Okay. And I like etch and seal because it contains aluminum oxalate. And that aluminum oxalate seals dentinal tubules. So when you're doing your regular operative dentistry, when you etch enamel margins, then the oxalate will seal it. So we have phosphoric acid on the enamel. And we have citric acid on the porcelain. Okay. Stay open now. Now, you want these clean and dry. And... How long do you want to clean and dry until you get the resin on there? So I put serenade prime on the porcelain and I'm putting tenure AB on the enamel. It will bond to any composite and nothing works better than tenure AB. You're looking at the left central, which is a different shade than the right central. But the luminaires are the same shade. What we have here is a difference in, in the hue, in the value. And the reason is that there's a thing called the uh, critical angle. And once light is passing through a medium, it continues to go through that medium until the critical angle is exceeded. Then it bounces back. Now, where we have the tenure AB, we have space, air, between the etched surface of the porcelain. And so what you're getting on the left central is a bounce back of the color of the etched porcelain. Now, when we put the ultrabond triant paste in, it goes all the way through to the tooth and it gives you a more natural appearance. So that's why 
using the Ultrabon try and paste is critical. The Ultrabon try and paste is exactly the same as Ultrabon without the activators in it. Now we're going to let our patient do the final selection of the shade. The left one or the right one? Right one? I think the right one is what we picked out yesterday. We see spaces all around the margins of the porcelain. But that gets filled in with the Ultrabond. And what I'm doing right now is removing the try-in paste. I'm removing it with a material called Tenure S. And that's a bond enhancer. And I'm going to put this all over the surface areas that I've treated with Tenure AB. And that's important because once you have done surface preparation, a race begins between resin and contamination. Whatever gets there first wins. Lisa's using Tenure S to remove the try and paste from the inside of the luminaire. And you never want to put the Tenure S on before you put the try and paste on because it's going to set it. So it's a backup for you. Cuspid? Okay. So we'll stay on the right side. I want to get that left one on pretty quick. What I'd like to do right now is get the two millimeter tip for one second. Be sure you see excess come out. Close your eyes. If you don't see excess come out, you may have a void. Close your eyes. Close. Lisa always calls out and tells me the name of the tooth. That was the left first bicuspid, right? And I always stay one tooth distal from the last tooth before I put on the one second. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. And the tenure S is beginning to set some of the ultra bond, even though on the lingual side we don't have any light on there yet. So it, you've got a lot of backup and fail safe things here to make sure you get a complete set of the ultra bond. Now I'm going to polymerize. One tooth at a time, nine millimeter tip, five seconds. Close your eyes. 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 And close your eyes. Now, in one minute, I have polymerized eight luminaires. And now wherever we have the paint on dental dam, we'll start removing that, and that will start our cleanup procedure. I'll give you a chance to look at this, and you can see what a big payoff I'm finishing here with this. There it goes. Some excess up here. We'll just get that off. It's on a porcelain ground. Okay. So now I'm using a Sure 349 to remove the Ultrabond off the labial surface. Okay. And then on the lingual side, we're going to take a football shaped diamond. And all of these things are in the clinician's finishing kit. And I'm blending 
the porcelain and the ultra bond and the enamel all together. Wide. Okay, so now we'll go to the inner proximals and I'll start with the 12 fluted burr. By using a 12 fluted burr, I won't remove much of the uh, porcelain. And I'll save that for when I'm using the porcelain finishing diamonds. Now in just a second, I will show you how important finishing is. Because this is just like taking it off if it were still soft. And now let's take a look at his left side. And that is what it looks like after you remove the Ultra Bond. Now think about what I haven't done. I haven't opened the embrasures yet. So when you do a try-in with a patient and you've got resin in there and those embrasures aren't open and you get started looking for what's, quote, not right, then that's what you're focused on. See, this is what you'd get on a try-in. Something like that. And so I spend my time on the finishing and not so much on the try-in. Now we go back to the 12 fluted burr. And four power magnification. And this just follows along the inner dental area. And you won't cut the porcelain. You won't ditch it. Now, when I go to diamonds, I'm going to be trimming porcelain. So I don't want to confuse Ultra Bond with porcelain when I'm in that area. So that's why I do this extra step. Okay, now we're going to take the needle nose diamond and think about this. We never did any preparation on the teeth, right? No. Okay. So we created a shoulder. Now, you create a shoulder when you prep the teeth. Now we've created a half millimeter margin, right? Only it's extra. What we're going to do is take that half millimeter margin away after we got it bonded with Ultrabond. So now I go back around after I've done the 12 fluted burr. And I go into these embrasures again. Open wide. I'm going to shorten this lateral just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to check the occlusion. Now close. So let's see what it looks like on the lingual side, because occlusion is critical. And if you don't have the right occlusion, harmonious occlusion, these things will chip and break. Usually what I do with patients is I limit this visit to about an hour to an hour and a half. And I don't get everything finished. I open the easy contact points, and you want to be sure where you bonded porcelain to porcelain that you don't have any trauma. Because I tell patients they can eat, but uh, don't overstress that tooth until the next day or the next week. Now let's take a look here. I'm going to use a long, narrow diamond and open these embrasures a little bit more. So now what we're going to do is take the seri saw, and what this does is we cut through and that stopped right there. It got a little pressure. So you don't take and keep sawing when you get pressure. Then you start rocking. And if you have to rock a lot, then maybe what you do is you stop and do it when the patient comes back in a week. And we'll try one more over here. As I say, you don't have to open them on this visit. I'm using a seri sander now just so that the floss will go through easier. 
and the patient comes back on the second visit, you'll spend another half hour, hour doing this, maybe even a third visit. And I'll take the long, narrow diamond. You can see a little ultra bond in there. And I'm just going right down in those embrasures. Here we go. So I tell my patients when we get finished that we are about 80% done. We're doing six on the lower. Great. Pain on dental dam goes on the lingual side. This is what you got to look out for that you don't have it coming through these interproximals. Close your eyes. And we're going to take and apply two solutions, etch and seal. We just brush it all around. And then we take the tenure AB. And we're going to put Tend your S on. And then that will protect the surface from contamination. Now if I was going to take an hour or two, I'd better have a rubber dam on, but I'm not. Left cuspid, okay. You can just sort of tap these down. I always want too much rather than too little so that I make sure I don't have any voids. This is a very critical time. You don't want to have your dental assistant trying to read the instructions and figure out what to do next when you're doing this. Here we go. And I get it going down to the gingival. Now when I take and apply the two millimeter tip for one second, I'm going to apply it to the gingival. And the reason I am is because I have put it on the incisal and had the gingivals pop out. So that's a little trick. All right, now let's see. Close your eyes. 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 Nine millimeter tip for five seconds. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. Okay, let's see what we have here. Let's take a look at the lingual side. Okay, having that paint on dental dam really makes a difference, especially on lowers. You'll see that in just a moment. Now we'll do this kind of like we did before, except we'll take the football shaped diamond, go across the lingual. See, these embrasures just open up real nice with the 12 fluted burr, but they won't ditch the porcelain. And that's important.
Now I'm just scaling with my Shure 349. All these instruments are in the finishing kit. Okay. Open. Close. Gently grind your teeth around. Now this is critical in here that you get the occlusion right. Because if you don't get the occlusion right, you got big problems. Open. See all those spots in there? What we want to do is take a long ultra fine diamond and gently contour these teeth so they don't hit so much. And I'm going to leave the cuspids alone first. And then we'll take the embrasures, go up here a little bit. Okay, let's have some gauze here now. Check the occlusion. Close. Right around. Open. And most of that's on natural tooth structure, so I'm going to take the football shaped diamond, you move a little off the top on the lingual side, and then I'll come back to the lowers, get those teeth together. You want to make sure you don't have any con heavy contacts on the porcelain. Let's see what we got here. Gently close your teeth and grind around. We've got kind of a heavy spot there. I want to show that to everybody because this is this is where you're going to run into your problems. In this case, it's the mesial of that lateral. See that? Mesial of that lateral hitting that porcelain. So we want to give relief in there. Now, this has been about two hours. And tomorrow, we'll open his contacts, do some more finishing, do some more final occlusal adjustment. And we transformed this patient with uh, 14 lumineers in uh, two hours. So with that, I'd like to uh, tell you it's been fun being with you. Remember, I've got lumineers. And I tell people, if I could get hair the way I got lumineers, you call me Curly. Okay. I chose lumineers because I myself wanted to have uh, aesthetic improvements, but I was always leery of having tooth reduction. And once the tooth structure is gone extensively, it's gone. You know, for aesthetics, I can't uh, see that. If you have a healthy tooth that needs a little trimming here or there, I'd, I'd rather see the minimal thing done. My teeth were worn down. You know, I'm getting older. And I just, and as a dentist, I thought it would be better to have it, uh, the image in the office as well as anywhere else I go. Having lumineers on my own teeth gives me an, an opportunity to at least say, look, you know, this is what you can do. And you don't, of course, can't see me how I looked before, but this is a result of what lumineers can do. You, you want to give a big, broad smile now. <laughs>